Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be recapping day 7 of the Washington Commanders training camp. I'll be talking about some of the biggest takeaways including Curtis Samuel somewhat being back at practice. Also Carson Wentz and Cole Turner continuing to ball out together. We'll also get into you know important injury updates and more so if you guys are new make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content on the road to 9,000 subscribers. Also, check out real-time fantasy sports. Let's get into it. We'll start with the highlights from today's practice. Nothing crazy, but we got some Curtis Samuel clips, you know, Curtis Hodges, you know, running back, and more. So yesterday was the first day of pads. I was there. I made a vlog about it. Go ahead and check it out. Today is the second day of pads. So we'll start off with an injury update. <clears throat> Sorry about that. James Smith Williams was on the bike. He's been out for the last couple days with a hip injury. They'll probably give him a little bit of a rest and maybe the next session. So I don't. I think they're done on Thursday. I think so. And then they'll have a day off on Friday. I believe that's the case. And then maybe he's back after that. John Bates with a calf injury. I saw him yesterday with kind of like a sleeve or something around his calf slash ankle. So I guess we finally know what it is now. And I don't know. I mean, he's been out every uh, six out of the seven training camp days. So hopefully it's nothing too crazy. I mean, usually calf injuries don't take multiple months. I mean, some of them do. I think John Bates should be fine, but who knows by the time the season starts. Troy Apke was on the side field. He was as well yesterday in the last few days. And then De'Ami Brown wasn't practicing today. Don't think they give an update on that. And then also William Jackson III was not practicing as well. He has, you know, he had some ice on his knee. So that to me is a little bit concerning just because he had a couple knee injuries last year. So Probably nothing, but, you know, a little bit concerning. And then Curtis Samuel was practicing today um, somewhat. Like, I don't think he was doing the one-on-one -on -one drills, but he was doing some of the seven-on-seven -seven, uh, work and the, you know, individual wide receiver drills. So, you know, it's good that at least he came back, but I'm not really going to take too much out of it until he's back. Like, he's fully back. Like, he's, we're, you no, know, honestly, until he plays a game, that's when I'll, I'll feel good about it, and actually maybe even multiple games, um, but it's good that he's back, and we'll see if he plays tomorrow, maybe they, they said they're going to, you know, ramp him up and ramp him down, so, you know, this will probably be the ramp up, so, you know, start off a little slow, day one, maybe day two, he'll do a little bit of 1v1 work, and then maybe day three, he'll go full go or something like that, and then start to ramp down again. Um, but yeah, we'll go through some of the big, so he got targeted on back-to-back -back plays and made both catches. I, I don't know when this was, uh, probably the 77, and he got a little contact on both plays and looked fine, so that's good right there. And then Carson Wentz with back-to-back -back completions over the middle to Jahan, to Jahan Dotson and Cole Turner, the rookie tight end, has flashed as a pass catcher throughout camp, and Cole Turner is one of Wentz's favorite targets, you know, if not, I mean, I think Jahan and Cole are his favorite targets like you know yesterday when i was there they were running the ball a ton so like they didn't pass as much as i thought they would or maybe they were doing before maybe just because it was the first day of pads i don't know but cole turner was getting a lot of you know targets jahan got like a couple terry got like one or two he wasn't even that involved but i think cole turner was his main target him and jahan so you know they're developing you know a connection and cole turner i think is gonna have a solid year for them gonna be a big red zone threat but like could me could be more depending on how you know john bates recover, recovers from the injury and same thing with logan thomas so 
I'm excited to see what Cole Turner can do, and he's such a chill and nice guy too, so really, really rooting for him. And let's see, we talked about the injuries right there. Really not concerned about James Smith-Williams. I think he'll be fine, and more concerned about William Jackson third, but still very, very low on you know the alarm scale like JP and them say. I'm not that concerned about it. John Bates, you know, really still haven't get, you know gotten us an update on that. So let's go through some of the takeaways from today this is from Matthew Paris we talked about Curtis Samuel there um and he, I think Curtis was he said he's been silent for the last three days I think it was like four um but it is what it is and then he said if there was concern that Carson Wentz wouldn't throw to running backs that really has uh, hasn't been the case so far in camp he's mixed in JD McKissick and Antonio Gibson repeatedly including in the most recent seven on seven session also real quick Samuel participated in seven on seven and when you know it's again it was yesterday but he was solid with the running backs he didn't really miss many throws to running backs so that's good for McKissick for sure same thing with Gibson both those guys are going to get targeted a decent amount um, let's see he said Terry McLaurin Curtis Samuel Deami Brown Jahan Dotson Drew Terrell played an intense game of hot potato and Terry McLaurin won and then he also said William Jackson third isn't participating and his left knee is wrapped in ice. And real quick, before we kind of get into the play-by-play, -play, I have a quick injury correction, because I said William Jackson III didn't practice, and that's what Matthew Paris said, but I kind of looked through the play-by-play -play real quick before I was going to go through it with you guys, and, you know, William Jackson III was in that play-by-play, -play, like a couple of plays, so maybe he got hurt during practice, and then we talked about it earlier, but Deron Payne wasn't there because of a vet day off, Deami Brown was there, not in pads, and he's wearing a sleeve over his right leg. So that's all we got on him. And then there's something else. Uh, Drew White, who was carted off the field yesterday, tore his ACL. So, of course, that ends his you know, season. They're probably going to place him on IR today or in the next couple of days. And, you know, you know he, he was maybe battling for a roster spot. You know, for the linebacking depth is not great at all. So he had a chance. One of those undraft free agents maybe will make the team. Unfortunate situation for him. Um, and, you know, hopefully he recovers. Um, he has a good recovery. So now let's move on to the play-by-play -play right here. So one-on-ones uh, -on are up, and William Jackson third broke up a pass to McLaurin. So that's kind of what I was saying right there. And Benjamin St. Juice got the best. Uh, or got the better of Jahan Dotson. So, I mean, Benjamin St. Juice has been balling out. He's been really, really solid. A little bit handsy from what I've seen, but, you know, that was kind of something that was he did in college as well. So a little, you know, thing that he can work on cleaning up, but he's been really, really solid for sure. And let's see, um, Dotson had a nice grabble working against William Jackson III, had to reach a little bit behind him for the throw, but hauled it in before falling to the ground. And then Dax Milne makes a catch from Heineke in seven-on-seven -seven drills. He had one during one-on-ones. Two, the former seventh round is quietly putting together a solid string of practice. And I think, you know, a lot of people are kind of, you know, writing him off to make the roster and, you know, automatically putting Alex Erickson over him. And who knows, maybe that's the case. Uh, you know, I don't think Dax Mullen's done as much as, you know, uh, returning things, you know, drills and stuff. And, you know, that could be unfortunate for him because Alex Erickson, you know, if he makes the team, he's going to be a returner. And, you know, he's definitely a better returner than Dax Milne. But from what I've seen, you know, yesterday and just from clips and tweets, Dax Milne has been much better as a receiver than Alex Erickson has been so far. Like, Dax Milne has been really solid, making a few catches each practice. So, I think he could make the roster for sure. And then the next tweet, really nice PBU from Danny Johnson while working against Alex Erickson. Heineke was the QB on the play. And then, you know, really haven't heard much from Danny Johnson. So, good to hear. And really, Alex Erickson besides returning as well. So, good to hear a little bit from Danny Johnson. He's fighting for that last corner spot, in my opinion, between him and Corn Elder. I think they'll keep five. So, I think him, Corn Elder are fighting for that fifth spot. If they keep six, then, you know, they might keep both of them. And then Wentz opens 11 on 11 with a pass to Terry McLaurin, who was wide open for a 15-yard gain. I don't know if, you know, it's just me, but it seems like Terry McLaurin's had a little bit of a quiet camp. Like, I haven't heard about, like, many big game, you know, big plays or, like, that many catches, you know, which is a little bit, you know, different. He usually is, but I, obviously not concerned at all. We know Terry McLaurin, as long as he's playing, he's going to be bowling out. doesn't matter who's his quarterback, who are his receivers, but that's just something... 
an observ observation that I had. So maybe it's just, you know, it's taking a little while for Wentz and Terry to get that connection going. And, it you know, they started practice. I mean, their first practice together was about a week ago. And, you know, they did some work in L.A., but it was only for a couple of days. So I think it's, you know, rightfully so, it's going to take them a little bit while to get that connection. Like Wentz isn't going to have right now the same connection with McLaurin that he has with maybe Jahan Dotson and Cole Turner. So that's just something to keep in mind there. Let's see any more plays. So Wentz ended 11 on 11, completing all four of his passes, one to Terry and three to running backs. They had they did a lot of dump offs to running backs yesterday. And I thought Wentz yesterday did a really good job of, you know, taking what was there. You know, if it wasn't open down the field, he would just dump it off to a running back, you know, Jarrett Patterson, Jonathan Williams. And then Zach Selby says, really nice effort from Holcomb to get a tip pass on Wentz. He's also been, I mean, a little bit quiet, but also like a lot of the defensive, you know, players like linebackers and DNs, especially without pads, you know, it's a little bit different with pads now, but without pads, it's hard to do a lot of things besides maybe get some interceptions and, you know, for especially the linebackers. But now they got the pads on, I think we'll hear more from the linebackers, hopefully hear more from Jamin Davis because he's been super, super quiet. And I just don't think it's going to be an, a huge, huge, huge jump from him this year like some people think. Um, let's see. But he's, still, he's got a lot of time. We talk about this Curtis Samuel play. Got targeted on back-to-back -back plays and made both catches. Good to hear there. And then Wentz had a nice throw to Dotson. QBs have looked really or pretty sharp in the second half of practice. So that is it for the big play. So kind of my takeaways from that is, you know, Dotson's doing what he does, you know, uh, just balling out with Wentz. Cole Turner, again, not a huge day, but, you know, we weren't there, so we didn't get to see all the plays. They don't tweet about all the plays, but he had a couple nice catches today, or at least one, and yesterday had two really good catches. So him and Wentz have a really good bond and I th or connection, and I think Cole Turner is going to have a good year. He's proud after meeting him and just watching. He's probably one of my favorite players now. So I'm hoping he has a big year, and I think he will. Um, you know, still not much of a blocker, but they will find ways to use him as a tight end and even like a hybrid. Like he is, you know, more of a tight end than a receiver, but he's a hybrid of the two. Like he used to play receiver, now he's a tight end, but like you can line up, you know, line him up in the slot. You can line him up as a receiver at times, try to get a mismatch. So, you know, that I really like with, you know, what they have in Cole Turner. And I like John Bates as well because he is, I like the combination of the two is perfect in my opinion. You got one that's a great, great blocker and a solid pass catcher. And then you got one that's, you know, coming out of college that's a really good pass catcher and not so great of a blocker. So I think combine those two and I think it'll be a really good combination who knows maybe you know Cole Turner can develop into a you know okay to below average blocker which you know is solid for primarily you know a pass catching tight end so you know if he can develop into below average to average it's a you know big improvement over what he is now so that is going to be it for today's video I hope you guys did enjoy if you did hit that like button subscribe if you guys are new and peace